Welcome to this webinar of the summary of our pan-European consumer research on nutrition information on labels and consumers' nutrition knowledge. My name is Josephine Wills and I'm the Director General of UFIC, the European Food Information Council. With me and presenting the results is Professor Klaus Grunert of the University of Aarhus in Denmark. Klaus is an expert in consumer research and he's been involved in the design of the research, all of the data analysis and the presentation and conclusions of the results. Now, associated webinars of the full pan-European results and the full UK results can be found on the UFIC website at www.ufic.org. So now I'm going to hand over to Klaus and he's going to take you through a summary of the results. Klaus. The study was designed to answer three research questions. First, how good is consumers' nutrition knowledge? Second, to what extent do consumers use nutrition labels when shopping? And third, to what extent are consumers aware of guideline daily amounts and other labeling systems, understand them, and are able to use them? And in order to give answers to these questions, the study was designed in such a way that it consists of three parts. It started with shoppers being observed at the aisle in supermarkets. They were observed how long they were handling products and they were observed whether they were looking in any detail at the front or elsewhere on the product. And then afterwards they were interviewed in the shop being asked questions with regard to that particular purchase, including questions on whether they had looked for any nutrition information on that package, which type of information and where they had found that information. Then people got a questionnaire to take home which they were supposed to fill out at home and return. And this questionnaire contained questions about nutrition knowledge, contained questions about awareness, knowledge and proficiency in using labeling systems, and a section on background variables. We had field work being done in six countries, and in these six countries we had a number of retail stores that were selected for diversity in the labeling systems that were in use in these uh, various retail chains. Also within each country, there was some geographical spread with regard to the stores selected in order to make sure that we have a broad representation of shoppers. More than 11,000 in-store interviews were carried out and 5,700, a little more than that actually, of these did return the in-home questionnaire which makes for a very nice response rate for this type of a study. In all countries, we found that uh, most of the respondents were females, reflecting the fact that buying food is still mainly a task for the women in most households in these countries. About a third of the respondents had children under 16, and we had a good spread in the sample, both with regard to age groups and with regard to social grades. I will now take you through the major conclusions of the study organized by the three main research questions that uh, I was presenting in the beginning. So the first research question was, how good is consumers' nutrition knowledge? And in order to measure that, we administered a series of questions in the in-home questionnaire. We found that people have reasonably good knowledge about what experts recommend people should eat more, less, more of, less of, or about the same but we found that people have a tendency to exaggerate with regard to foods that are to be avoided, believing that these foods should not be eaten at all, rather than should be eaten in smaller quantities. We found that people have a reasonable good command of calories, including the calorie content of foods, but many consumers tend to underestimate calorie needs, and they also tend to underestimate calorie use. That means calories burned during certain activities. We found also that more than one third of respondents thought that children need more calories than an adult man, which is an interesting finding in the light of that people may think that they need to feed their children more calories than is actually needed. Some nutrients are better understood than others. Saturated fat, trans fat, total fat and omega-3 are pretty well understood whereas polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fatty acids are less well understood. We also found that starchy foods such as bread, rice, pasta and potatoes are not very well understood in the sense that, uh, that only a minority of respondents correctly answered that experts recommend that one should eat a lot 
of these types of food. Across all the many questions that we asked people in the questionnaire about their nutrition knowledge, covering both expert recommendations, nutrient content in selected food products, and calorie content in selected food products, we computed an overall index for nutritional knowledge, and this one here is the mean of that index across the six countries that are part of the study. We can see that nutrition knowledge is highest in the UK and lowest in Poland and France, with the remaining countries somewhere in between. We also found some effects of demographic variables. We found that the higher social grades tended to have better nutritional knowledge, and we also found that younger people tended to have better nutritional knowledge. <coughs> we then come to the second research question on to which extent consumers use nutrition labels when shopping. As I said in the beginning, people were observed in the shop when they were selecting products from the shelves in selected aisles. And we found that on average, respondents spent 30 seconds selecting a product with some variation between the countries. We checked whether respondents look at the product in any detail, and the majority of respondents, more than 60%, did look at the front of the pack before putting the product into the shopping basket. There was one exception, namely France, where only 31% did that. Actually, France was the only country where the majority of the respondents put the product into the shopping basket without looking at the product in any detail. Considerably less respondents looked somewhere else on the pack before putting the product into the shopping trolley, less than 15%, again with one exception, namely Germany, where it was 32%. Time spent selecting a product differs by product category. Throughout all the countries, the product category where people spent most time were ready meals, and the product category where people looked most briefly uh, did vary across various countries. We asked people then, what was the main reason for choosing this particular product, the one that you have just put into your shopping trolley? And throughout the countries, again, taste was clearly the main reason for product choice, and that goes for all product categories with a few exceptions. The one exception is in the UK, that for breakfast cereals and for yogurts, health and nutrition was mentioned most frequently as a reason. And also in the UK, convenience was mentioned most frequently for ready meals. Also in France, family wants were an important reason when selecting a breakfast cereal. But generally speaking, taste was clearly the major reason for product choice. We then asked people, did you look for any nutrition information on the packaging of this product here? <coughs> Sorry. And we have here the percentage of people who answered yes to that question. And the highest percentage of people having looked for nutrition information on the packaging before selecting the product is in the UK, 27%. And the lowest we have in France, 9%. And then we have a number uh, of figures between that and the other countries. We checked whether these are valid figures by trying to find out whether people uh, could show on the package the nutrient that they looked for. All people were able to do that. We also cross-checked with the observational data whether people who said who did look for nutrition information on the packaging actually were observed having looked at the package. And we find reason to believe that these figures here actually are very valid figures of the percentage of people who did look for nutrition information on the packaging. When we uh, then asked people, what did you look for? Calories were clearly the piece of information that was most in demand. It was the top of the list in four out of the six countries, the exceptions being the UK, where fat was more, uh, was more frequently mentioned, and Sweden, where sugar and fat were more frequently mentioned. Percentages of people mentioning calories among those who did look for nutrition information was highest in Germany, 69%, and lowest in Hungary with 33%. Fat was also a very frequently mentioned nutrient that people were looking for. It was among the top three mentioned nutrients in all countries except Hungary. And also sugar was among the top five mentioned nutrients in all countries. 
Looking at the other two elements of the five key nutrient concept, namely saturates and salt, you find that saturates and salt were less frequently mentioned. Saturates were not among the top five in any country except the UK, uh, and salt was among the top five only in the UK and Germany. The top five mentions also include a few other things that are not part of the five key nutrients. Food additives were mentioned in Hungary, France, and Poland so frequently that they became part of the top five. Fibers were mentioned in Sweden, protein in Hungary, and vitamins in Poland. On this slide here, we can see where people said they had looked for the information and where people also could show on the package that they had found the information. And we can see that there are two major sources of information that people refer to, namely the nutrition table and the GDA label. GDA labels being more frequently mentioned in the UK, France and Germany, and less frequently in Sweden, Poland and in Hungary. The ingredients list was also something that was mentioned to some extent in those countries, especially where the frequency of mentioning GDAs was somewhat lower. In those countries where color-coded labels were in use, that means in the UK and in France here, these of course also were mentioned to some extent, uh, more so in the UK and less so in France. So when we look at uh, degrees of looking for nutritional information and determinants of how many look for nutritional information, first of all, as you have seen, we find countrywise differences, namely that uh, looking for nutritional information was most frequent in the UK and least frequent in France. Within each country, there were also regional differences, meaning that in some cities, respondents had a higher likelihood of looking for that type of information than in others. There were differences according to product category. People were most likely to look for nutrition information for yogurt and cereal. That means those products that in the first place have a healthy image. Uh, and people were more likely, not surprisingly, to look for nutrition information when they stated that health and nutrition was the major reason for the purchase, keeping in mind that for the majority of respondents, this was not the major reason of purchase. You find that people with a higher level of nutritional knowledge as measured by our index, are more likely to look for nutritional information and that older respondents had a slightly higher chance of looking for nutritional information. And we also found that people in the higher social grades were more apt to look for nutritional information, whereas there were no effects of gender, no effects of people's BMI, no effect of which store people were interviewed in. You can then come to the third part of the conclusions about the extent to which consumers are aware of guide, guideline daily amounts and other labeling systems, understand them, and are able to use them. And on this slide here, we see figures for the awareness of GDA labels in the six countries based on two questions. Have you heard of GDAs? Have you seen such a label before? <coughs> And we can see that the awareness is pretty high. It is highest in the UK, where 90% have seen such a label before. But also in Germany, Poland, Hungary, uh, it is still very high. In France, it's still more than 50% who have seen such a label before. And in Sweden, where it is lowest, uh, it is still about 40%. We also find that if we ask people, how well do you think you understand what this label means, on a scale from not at all to extremely well, 1 to 10, with the exception of Germany, on average, people think they have a pretty good understanding of what the label means, with a scale value of around 7. Only in Germany, it's lower. It's about the scale uh, midpoint here at 5.3. So there are differences by country, but they are uniformly sort of pretty high. We can also look at whether different types of people are more likely to have seen or heard about GDAs. And you find that people with good nutritional knowledge are more likely to have seen them or have heard about them. Also people with children and maybe not surprising people who have a high interest in healthy eating. In uh, three out of the countries, Sweden, France and the UK, you also find that awareness of GDAs is higher for younger people. But it's not related to gender, it's not related to social grade, <coughs> and it's not related to where people were interviewed. We had then some similar results for 
color-coded systems in those countries where we have some, namely in the UK and in France. We have for the UK the Astra Hybrid label, the Sainsbury Wheel of Health and the FSA traffic lights. And uh, in France we had the NutriPass system which is being used by the Intermarché retail chain. In the UK, by far most of the shoppers had heard about the traffic light system, 81%, whereas in France it was uh, different, only a minority of shoppers had heard of or seen uh, the NutriPass color coding system. But irrespective of whether people had seen this label before, the subjective understanding is still pretty high, it's still around 7 uh, for also for these systems here. In Sweden we have the keyhole and also here we asked about whether people are aware of the keyhole and whether they think they understand it. Awareness of the keyhole in Sweden is very, very high, it's over 95% and subjective understanding is again at around the same level at around 7. We then had a number of questions trying to check people's actual understanding of the GDA concept. Here we have a question about whether GDAs indicate as a percentage of an adult's daily needs the level of nutrients in 100 grams of the food and a serving of the food or both or none of these. And you find that most of the respondents actually can come up with the right answer, but then also a sizable proportion of the respondents comes up with the answer, it's in a hundred gram of the food and not in a serving of the food. We had another multiple choice question where people were asked if the food label says the average adult guideline daily amount for fat is 70 gram, what do you think this means? The correct answer was an average adult should eat no more than 70 grams of fat a day. And then there are four alternative answers that were not correct, but sort of still not completely uh, uh, implausible. As we can see here, uh, by far most respondents can find the right answer. Uh, it's a 90% almost in the UK, uh, and it's still very high in Germany. And in all countries except France, it's actually more than half of the respondents that, respondents that can come up with the right answer. And in France, it's a bit lower, but it's still a sizable proportion of the respondents. We tried to do some check about understanding of the traffic light concept as well. This here is from the UK study where people were being presented with the three colors and then had to find the right meaning of the colors. For each color, people had a range of alternatives that they could tick off. Uh, of course, the official definitions of the FSA were included and then some additional ones as well. People were instructed to only t uh, mark one of the possible answers as correct. What did happen, though, is that uh, many respondents did more than one mark showing that they were a little bit uncertain about the right answer, especially with the amber and the red color. And it seems to indicate that people find it somewhat difficult to distinguish between the graduation of the meaning. With regard to the red color, the official definition is it's fine to have this product occasionally as a treat. People find that difficult to distinguish from the more severe, I should try not to eat this product. So the overall conclusion is that for the amber and for the red, that people tend to uh, overinterpret or exaggerate the meaning of the colors. In Sweden, 55% could find the correct definition of the keyhole. Again, when presented with five alternatives, this was actually the highest number of correct answers that we found for any of the labeling systems that we have tested. And also, a whole 71% of respondents in Sweden knew that the keyhole symbol is supposed to help comparing products within a category and not across categories. <coughs> then uh, we had a number of tests where people were being presented with GDA labels. This here is an example from the UK. People were shown a product with a GDA label on that. And then people were asked which of the following statements is the correct one. There was this figure 11.7 on the label and the correct interpretation was the product contains 11.7 grams of fat and none one of the others. As you can see in the UK, by far most respondents, more than two thirds, find the right answer. And uh, also in the other countries, more than half of respondents can come up with the correct answer except for Poland where the figure was 34%. We then gave people 
three products like this here with three GDA labels. And people were asked, if you ate one serving of each of these products on the same day, would your total intake of sugar be more equal to or less than the guideline daily amount of sugar a person should be eating in a day? And the share of correct answers to that question was, uh, again, pretty high, 75% highest, again, in the UK, 65 in Germany, and then it trails off. But again, with the exception of Poland, it's uh, more or less about half of the respondents that uh, are at least able to come up with the right answer. We checked that whether, in addition to the country-wise differences, we have effects of uh, various demographic factors. We find that, not surprisingly, people with high nutritional knowledge were more likely to come up with the right answer here. Uh, in three out of the countries, there was an effect of social grade, and in most countries, understanding is better for younger people. On the other hand, finding the right answer was not related, or not clearly related, related at least, to uh, having children, to BMI, and to other people interested in healthy eating. We then gave people three products, or rather pictures of three products, but with pictures covering all of the packaging, front of back, and these were products within the ready meals or pizza categories. And people were just asked, which of these three products is the healthiest? And there was a clear answer to that based on nutritional criteria. It was clear that one of them was uh, healthier than the two others. And what this graph here shows is the percentage of people being able to correctly identify the healthiest product. And we find that in the UK, France, and Germany, these percentages are very high, as they are 80% or higher. And in Hungary, Poland, and Sweden, they are lower, but they're still at around half of the respondents. We also see that for the UK, France, and Germany, where we tested different labeling systems, uh, it doesn't really make a difference which labeling system is on the product, whether it's, for example, Tesco GDAs or the Sainsbury Wheels of Health or whether it's a NutriPass in France or a GDA label, still people, most people, are able to correctly identify the healthiest product. And again, the probability of coming up with the correct answer is higher for people with better nutritional knowledge, and it's higher for younger people. But it's not related to social grade, not related to gender. We then uh, showed people two labels like this here and asked them which of these is healthier. And there was a clear answer to that. The left label here, which has lower calories, lower fat, is and lower saturates is the healthier product. And uh, by far most people are able to come up with the right answer here, as you can see here. And again, that does not seem to depend heavily on which labeling system is being used. Color-coded GDA systems, that is in NutriPass in France, and the Asta hybrid in the UK is a little bit lower, but that may just have to do that respondents were a little bit more unfamiliar with these particular labels. You also have a set of three labels here where people who are asked which of these products is the healthiest and which products is the least healthy. You find that most people regarded the product on the left as the least healthy, and that was a product which was highest in calories and highest in fat, showing that Calories and fat are the major drivers of the perception of unhealthiness. That is a pattern we had in all of the countries. As far as the remaining two products are concerned, one was high in salt, one was high in saturates. And we find that uh, people were more likely to find the product with a high level of salt uh, as the healthiest, indicating that people are more apt to ignore high levels of salt in evaluating the overall healthiness of so many people, uh, more than 70% in Germany, France, and the UK, can identify the healthiest product between three actual products, and it's still about 50% in Hungary, Poland, and Sweden. Awareness, understanding, and ability to make correct health inferences do depend to some extent on demographic characteristics, and the major ones are nutritional knowledge, age, and social grade. And as we just have seen, if the... Uh, if the healthy health alternative is not completely clear based on the five key nutrients, then fat and calorie levels drive healthy perception of healthiness more than levels of salt and saturated fat. 
You also asked people, if a product you usually buy has high GDAs for one or more nutrients, what would you do? And there are two extreme answers. I would buy the product anyway, and I would not buy the product at all. I would buy the product anyway, 12% said so in the UK. That was uh, actually higher in some of the other countries, up to 23%. Uh, I would not buy the product at all. Uh, 11% in the UK study did that. That was about the same level in the other countries, uh, up, to, uh, up to 12%. With regard to the Swedish keyhole, you also ask people if a product you usually buy does not have the Swedish keyhole, what would you do? 44%, which is the highest number compared to the other systems, said they would buy the product anyway. Also, it's interesting that the majority of respondents said that they would still look uh, always or at least occasionally for other nutrition information on the label, even if a product does have the keyhole. And this is the summary of the major conclusions of this study here.